the state auditor, Diana DeZaglio, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. Some people think that holding on to power makes them strong. She is vocal in her push to audit the state legislature, but Beacon Hill leaders say she's off key. Can she break through? The auditor is here. It's music to our ears. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with New Center 5's political reporter, Charmin Segetti. It's great to have you with us this morning. As you see at the table with us, it's the state auditor, Diana Dezogli, who, when she just heard herself sing, she went, oh, no, really? <laughs> If you want to sing some more, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate the offer. Uh, okay, Let's get down to this. If we have time after, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm happy to do a little small performance with you, though I haven't warmed up this morning. Great, great to have you with us. Thanks, Thanks for, for being here. here. So obviously we opened the show with you singing at the Democratic Convention. Um, you are pushing for an audit of the yes. state legislature. Now, last week here on OTR, Attorney General Andrea Campbell said she expects to make a decision soon on your push to go ahead and sue the legislature. What was your reaction to that? Yeah, you know, uh, no surprise, we've been working with the Attorney General's office. Uh, they've been uh, communicating, actually, with our team in the State Auditor's office. They have uh, sent us some questions. We are in the process of answering those questions uh, pertaining to the legal memo that was sent to them a while back, and we are hopeful uh, that we will have a report back from her office soon and hope to earn her support to ensure that our state legislature is held to the same standard as every other state entity in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and receives an audit from our office to promote transparency, accountability, accessibility, and equity. Are you, are you expecting a matter of weeks at this point? Uh, well, like the Attorney General said, uh, there's not an exact time frame that's put on it. I know that they're hard at work because they have been communicating with our office. Uh, so we'll see, and uh, obviously the sooner the better. To, to be clear, the, the Speaker and the Senate President have said, no, you don't have the authority. I mean, they, it's, to them it's black and white. Why is it black and white the other way to you? Yeah, I find it incredibly unfortunate that uh, the Speaker and Senate President are the two out of uh, everybody in the Commonwealth who are pushing back on this uh, audit. We conduct audits, like I just said, of every state entity. We just completed an audit of the Supreme Judicial Court. We're currently auditing the governor's office right now. You don't really hear about these things too much in the press because those entities haven't thrown temper tantrums about the audits that are being conducted. And this is simply a matter of promoting transparency and mm -hmm. accountability so that we, the people, the taxpayers at home, know how our tax dollars are being spent. That is the people's house that state legislators are operating in. It is not the politician's house. It is our tax dollars that are being spent, not their private Lawmakers dollars. Lawmakers are throwing temper tantrums, in your opinion. Uh, well, you know, I just think that it's unfortunate that uh, we've gotten to the place where it's been several months of our office trying to simply do our jobs and that auditors in our office who are paid by the taxpayers can't even get meetings uh, with certain lawmakers who have access to the documents we're requesting, that the Speaker and Senate President continue to tell staff that they're not allowed to meet with the auditors in our office. Uh, that is not uh, being conducted in the spirit of cooperation. And, you know, look, I, I understand that, that audits can be uh, challenging uh, from time to time. Certainly, uh, you know, we don't have parades thrown in the office's honor when we come in to conduct our audits, generally speaking. But what we do see is a spirit of cooperation coming from most state entities uh, because they understand that our office exists to help make government work better for them and for those they serve. That is our office's mission. I've said many times, we're not the FBI. Uh, we don't go in and toss desks around. We go in there to make sure that T's are crossed, I's are dotted, that processes and procedures are functioning correctly so that everybody is better served. Um, we were just talking about the Attorney General. The Attorney General did approve a preliminary ballot question that gives voters a say on auditing the legislature. You said at the convention, in fact, that you had only gathered, what, a thousand signatures? On, and, 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 and the target is 75,000? The target is 75,000. So uh, I had uh, collected about 1,000 personally. Can you get it by done the, in time for the deadline? By the convention, I had, conduct, I had collected about 1,000 personally. Yeah. That did not include all of the signatures that others okay. have been right, gathering. Right. Uh, so we do have, uh, I believe, several thousand. We don't have a full count on those yet. But we are certainly not near the point that we need to be. So uh, I would be remiss not to ask voters who are sitting at home, if you'd like to join our effort, uh, please uh, contact me at dianaforma.com. Click the ballot button and we will mail you some signature 
uh, sheet so that you can help us to collect these signatures and get this issue on the ballot so voters can make crystal clear how they feel about this issue. All right. Politico has reported that Republicans like Ernie Bach Jr. and Rick Green have been contributing money to your efforts to audit the legislature. That has rankled some Democrats. Do you think it should? Uh, you know, I find it unfortunate that the chair of the Democratic Party has attacked this effort regarding increasing transparency by giving people back at home access to being able to vote for this on the ballot mm -hmm. uh, by attacking those who have contributed to these efforts. This is a uh, nonpartisan effort. Uh, some of the same Republicans that are being attacked right now for contributing to this uh, movement to audit the state legislature are some of the same Republicans who have actually donated to our Democratic governor, our Democratic Senate president, and our Democratic speaker in the thousands of dollars. So I just question uh, you know, why our chair would be attacking uh, only their donations to this effort, but not uh, hold, you know, that line across the board. So uh, I, I see that as being problematic. And I, and I do think that, you know, we need to make sure that folks of all political stripes understand that we welcome your support of this. We are grateful for your support of this. And it's going to take all of us working together to get this done. I do want to ask you your response, because you have endured a lot of criticism over, over asking for these audits. So, some of them have been that you're doing it to raise your own profile versus in the best interests of the people. What is your response to that? My response to this is I talked about doing this for nearly two years on the campaign trail and told voters that, that they voted for me that this was going to be what I did as their next state auditor. I am fulfilling the commitment that I made to voters on the campaign trail. The only reason why this has gotten increased attention in the media and elsewhere is because legislative leaders are the only ones in the Commonwealth refusing to comply. Again, I note that you don't really generally hear about a lot of the other audits that we are conducting. They generally don't even make the press. A lot of times we'll post them on our website, send out a press release, the story doesn't get picked up because they're complying with our office. So what is making news about this is not the fact that we're conducting an audit like we do for every state entity. It's the fact that legislative leaders are the only ones refusing to comply. So, so let me just, the calendar in front of you, you got what, November 22nd, roughly two months to get to the signatures. You think you'll hit your target? Yes uh, or no? We are going to hit You're the target, hit yes. Okay. We are going to hit the target, but only with your support. I, so make I, sure you reach out to me. Ne next item is the MBTA. You, 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 we can't do a newscast. We can't do OTR without talking about the MBTA. Last week we learned about track trouble on the new Green Line extensions. Less than a year after opening it, trains are forced to slow down to three miles an hour for safety reasons. I can barely walk because I have a, a walk Im impediment, and I can walk faster than that. So is, is that something you as the auditor, the three mile an hour speed, will look into? So our office is currently conducting an audit of the MBTA uh, with a focus on performance and safety. Uh, it is an audit that is being conducted of uh, years preceding. Uh, we are absolutely concerned about this uh, issue. We've heard about it from all sorts of folks who have been contacting our office, uh, obviously, as, as we've seen it in the press and, and being covered. You know, I find it... Um, you know, interesting that that's happening uh, at, at the same week, essentially, as we've seen this uh, tax package get brought up up on Beacon Hill that was largely something that folks had an issue with regarding the process and procedures, regarding how the tax relief bill was actually brought up. We know that we need funding for transportation. We know that we need funding for education to make sure that we can focus on these problematic areas. Uh, so I would just say that, yes, we're conducting an audit of the MBTA, uh, but also that audit of the state legislature largely has to do with these types of things because we have a tax relief bill that's coming up. Uh, you know, transportation funding is needed in the state right now. We need to make sure those conversations are being to held. To be clear, the green, the, line, the green Line extension is new. It opened nine months ago. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is this really a funding issue? for this particular? It's an accountability issue. Uh, it's a transparency issue. And we absolutely need to make sure that we have the resources available. But we need to make sure that those resources are being spent properly. And it's challenging to make sure that resources are being spent property, properly when we have leaders on Beacon Hill refusing to comply with audits.